You guys, it's a huge honor for me. <laughs> <laughs> we made it, dude. Finally. Yeah, man, super excited, Hannah. The collaboration is here, friends. Gracie University with BJJ Fanatics for the first time ever. Yep. We've yep. been talking about this for a and, long and, time. And, and, and man, we were trying hard. We were trying really hard. <laughs> I don't know how many times I came here, how many emails, how many phone calls. Too so. many, bro. Years. Yep. We've been trying to make this happen. No better time than now. Yep. The okay. 32 principles of Jiu Jitsu. Um, by far, the most successful program we've ever released at Gracie University. It's changing everything for Jiu Jitsu for so many people from white to black belt. And when I created this product, it was my dream that it wasn't a Gracie, you know, university and Gracie fan project. It was an everybody in Jiu Jitsu project. You know, that's what I'm here for. Ultimately, our legacy is determined by the number of lives that we touch, the number of lives that we change. I'm very grateful to be a member of this amazing family of Jiu Jitsu. Um, but ultimately, you know, my legacy will be determined by the impact that we directly have on lives of people who practice Jiu Jitsu. And, uh, and the 32 Principles is doing just that. Hiron and I spent over a year creating this program. When COVID shut everything down, this was our full focus. Man, I came here last year in October. You were preparing this. Yes. Like, uh, we were on it. Yeah. And, you know, all of COVID basically was dedicated to this because we couldn't teach classes. School was shut down. Nothing. So we like went into the lab and we were like, man, how are we going to do something that would help us grow and understand Jiu Jitsu in a deeper level, but also help students get to our deep understanding of Jiu Jitsu much sooner. Yeah. Because it took us 35 years, you know what I'm saying? Individually for me and he don't understand Jiu Jitsu at this level, at the principle based level that we now do. So we're like, man, if we can provide this in a cohesive curriculum, structured way for students, we can change everything. And to understand the impact and the power of principles in jiu-jitsu, you have to start with the most important question. Why is it that some people in jiu-jitsu are naturals and some people are not? Yep. You know, we all see it. Every school has some. Yeah, and it should be for everyone. Right? It like should it, be for everyone, but ultimately you go to a school and you go, man, three or four naturals over there, everybody else is the regular students. Yeah. What's, what's yeah. up with the naturals? And what's crazy, it's not about rank, it's not about weight, it's not about athleticism, not about age. You have some old guys who are out of shape who move better, more natural, yeah. than the young, intelligent guys who simply can't seem to put it together. And you have some purple and brown belts who even though they've been around a long time, they still have trouble piecing it together and understanding jujitsu. Yeah. But you have some white and blue belts who it's like, oh, they got it, they have it. Yeah, they yeah. have it. And you've been a black belt and jujitsu practitioner and master for so long, you forgot what it was like to suck at jujitsu. Yeah, that's true. You no, feel no, me? No, when no, did you start? No. How old were you? Yeah, I was 14. So, so that was 2001. So I'm sure you have some memories of that, but you don't remember really how how difficult it was to not be good at jujitsu because yeah. you've been good for so long, as have I. Right? So we forget. But fortunately for Hiron and myself, at least, is we've never not been directly involved with the development of beginners in jiu-jitsu. When we were 13, we were started teaching jiu-jitsu. Yeah, so heard. since then till now, we've teach classes every single day to men, women, children, Navy SEALs, bullied children, women empowered, every program you can imagine. So we've always been in touch with the beginners. So for us, it's always a matter of how to communicate jiu-jitsu in a way that makes it to where anyone can actually own, learn, and ultimately anyone can become a natural. And when you ask what the difference is between the naturals and the rest, it can be summed up into one word, the principles, Yeah. right? And right. people talk about principles in jujitsu, but no one has ever actually kind of quantified them and really labeled them across the whole art so that it's a very easy curriculum to learn and understand and apply to your own jujitsu. And that's what we think we've done. Yep. So we're very excited. The course has been out now for several months. Been very successful for us. We're excited to partner with BJJ Fanatics to get it out to even more members of the Jiu Jitsu community. And we're doing a very special thing. 25% off the 32 Principles of Jiu Jitsu for four days only on BJJ Fanatics is what we're going to do. And it's this month. The party is going down. But what we wanted to do is give you a preview today of the impact that these principles can have on your life. What principle-based learning can do to your jujitsu? We're going to demonstrate today and we're going to prove to you that changing to principle-based learning as your operating system for jujitsu is the single most important decision you will ever make on the mat. Whether it's a green mat, a blue mat, a red mat, or a yellow mat. It doesn't matter what mat, what affiliation, what rank you are. Once you understand and see jujitsu through the lens of these 32 principles, we call them the 32 micro principles of jujitsu, everything changes. 
the best in that, and it doesn't matter, gi, no gi, MMA, sport, self-defense, they're all the same. The best analogy, friends, is the alphabet. Any, Wait, I love that. I any love language, it could be any yeah. language, but think about English. English alphabet, 26 letters. And with those 26 letters, over 470,000 words are possible in English according to, according to Webster's Dictionary. What the letters are to the English alphabet, the 32 principles are to Jiu-Jitsu. It's that simple. Every single technique in Jiu-Jitsu is possible as a function of one or more of these 32 micro principles. And the combinations and possibilities are limitless, right? English language is kind of limited because how often do you create new words, right? Really, not yeah. that often. Yeah. But Jiu-Jitsu, it never stops evolving. But all of that evolution is based on your knowledge of the alphabet of Jiu-Jitsu, which are these 32 principles. And that's why this is so exciting because what's happening today in jujitsu, crazy as it seems, imagine trying to learn to read and write English without first learning the alphabet. Yeah, I agree. I agree. What are you doing? Yeah, right? Very hard. You're right. You, yeah. you learn English, right? Yeah. English as your second language, Portuguese first. Coming here, learn. Imagine if there was no alphabet for you yeah. and they just said, hey, Bernardo, just start writing and putting letters together and figuring it out. And when you hear a word, just write it down and figure it out. But you want to know what each letter is. You want to know the sound of each letter. You want to know how each letter can have different sounds yep. in different words. Yep. And that's what happens is people all over the world of jiu-jitsu are trying to learn jiu-jitsu without understanding the jiu-jitsu alphabet. Yeah. No, and even nowadays, like sometimes I'm watching people compete and they do the bearing ball or whatever. And the, the foundation is off. Like they, they only have that pos specific position. There so, you go. Uh, I think everybody who will look up to you guys... They see that. They see that you guys are probably the best guys to teach the foundations, to teach the most important elements in order to that. build any other game. So. And that's what we're trying to do, you guys. I want to, like I said, my goal is not to teach sport or self-defense concepts here. My goal is to teach a language, a new lens through which to observe all of your jiu-jitsu. Because three things happen. Whether you're training MMA, sport, street, whatever your purpose of jiu-jitsu is, three things happen when you understand the 32 principles as we're going to discuss and introduce you to them today. Number one. It simplifies the process of learning new techniques. When you watch a technique, it can be very confusing or it can be very simple. Yep. How you right? How you absorb that experience of jujitsu is determined by what lens are you looking through. And we're going to give you the lens that makes absorbing that most efficient every single time. Whether you're watching a technique on YouTube or whether you're learning it from Bernardo or another instructor in person, wherever you're interacting with jujitsu, learning is easier when you understand the 32 principles of jujitsu. Number two. It helps you streamline the application of every technique when you're sparring, right? Because things change when you're sparring a little bit. And sometimes the move you learn here doesn't apply perfectly if the position changes a little bit, yep, yep, yep. right? So applying your techniques when sparring is streamlined when you understand the 32 principles. We're going to demonstrate that today. And finally, and probably most importantly, is it strengthens your ability to improvise in positions where you've never learned a technique. Because even though we've been training for 30 years, let's just say, you still land in positions where you go, yeah, wow, this yeah. is weird. What should I do here? What the yeah, heck do yeah, I do yeah, here? Yeah. The same as a white belt, but how is it that when you land in that unknown position, you can formulate a solution so much better? Because I have a foundation. There you go. Because you know the principles, even yeah. though you may have never labeled them, your many years of jiu-jitsu have given you a relationship with them such that you're able to call on that. So improvisation capabilities go through the roof when you know the 32 principles of jiu-jitsu. Because you can call on those as we're going to discuss and teach you guys to. So let's start by discussing how the 32 principles and understanding jujitsu from a principle-based learning perspective, how that simplifies the learning of jujitsu. Lay down with your head that way, please. Perfect, excellent. So let's just say that today's technique is a kind of a figure four arm bar from the mount. I'm gonna demonstrate it one time just so you can observe what the technique is. Then I'm gonna demonstrate the technique two times after that. One time as a memory-based learner would absorb it, and the other time as a principle-based learner would absorb the same technique. Check this out. So here's the technique. From the mount, we have hooks in, neck hug, control the wrist. Check it out. Boom, 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 elevate. Simple, okay, so that's the move. Figure four armbar from the mount, basic, simple, or complex, depending who you are. Here's how we'll call student A, student A, student B. Student A, a memory-based learner, someone who's very intelligent, remembers all the details. This is how they might observe this technique. Step number one, get low, hug the neck. 
Insert the hooks for hip pressure, step two. Step three, secure the wrist with the C-clamp. Step four, open up the pelvis, bring your elbow inside, connect it to your hip, step four, five, and six. Drive the hand to the ground, pushing it away, step seven. Push the hand away to get a reaction. He bends his arm on the way in. Step eight, hand it off for the false feed. Step nine, grab the wrist, C-clamp, palm down. Step 10, come in, palm up, digging through. Remove the thumbs from the grip, step 11. From here, elevate the elbow to the sky, step 12. Shoot the knee to the head. Step 13, invert the other foot all the way to the armpit and drop the knee. Step 14, adjust the hips for perpendicularity. Step 15, and now, when you're ready, hug the elbow and uppercut the chin. Hug the elbow, uppercut the chin, 16, 17, 18, 19, whatever, 20, right? And yep. now, when you look at that, you go, man, that's a lot of steps. We're gonna do it again, we're gonna do it again. When you look at that as, the, as student A, they go, man, 20 steps. Yep. Oh my gosh, it's a lot to remember right there. Student B, a principle-based learner, and similarly, a principle-based teacher, would observe and absorb the technique in a much different manner. Check this out. Here's how they might observe this technique and absorb it. Step one, pivot, frame, overload. Pivot, frame, Overload. So it's almost like three steps on each. You know, instead of memorizing like 20 steps, you memorize three, 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 and that's it. Yeah, so it makes it much simpler. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Because, and some people who are watching right now, Bernardo, are like, wait a minute, pivot frame overload. What are you even talking about? Because if what I just said was confusing to them, it's because you don't know the principles of jujitsu, the 32 principles. So what I said was foreign to you. But what I'm communicating to you is once you've learned the 32 principles, the language becomes totally different. Yeah, yeah. You just kind of, you put it together in a different way. So here's what I mean by that. Three principles happen right there. 22, principle 22, principle 10, and principle 24. Watch. Principle 22. From the neck hug, I secure the wrist. The pivot principle, what that teaches is right here, I want to push Bernardo's arm to the ground, but I have no leverage because my anterior deltoids cannot overcome his pec and his bicep strength. However, the pivot principle teaches changing the angle of a technique to increase its effectiveness. So if I want to push his wrist to the ground, all I have to do is open my pelvis and pivot my wrist around the axis of his right, that's wrist, and now yeah. I can have much more leverage from the inside. The frame principle, pivot, uh, principle number 10, teaches the substitution of muscular strength with skeletal structure. So now by placing my ulna and radius in my pelvis here, I'm creating a skeletal structure that now I don't have to muscle his arm out. By pivoting and framing, I can now drive my pelvis and drive his arm to the ground. Way more leverage. And at the end of the day, that's all we want is increased yep. leverage, better leverage, better timing. Yep. And that's what all 32 principles do is they increase our leverage, increase our timing, increase our control and effectiveness. So once again, pivot, frame, and then principle number 24, overload principle. That's the disproportionate, disproportionate application of resources to target a, a part of your opponent's body. So in this case, once I pin his arm down, I grab my own wrist right here. After pushing his arm away, he reacts and I come in. There's the control. So now I have two on one control on Bernardo's wrist, disproportionately controlling it with the resources of my arms here, overload principle, okay? Now from here, we hand off, we come under, and we grab thumbless grips on the wrist. I elevate his elbow to the sky, and now, let's rotate here. So now, here's what's interesting. Another pivot. This time I'm going to pivot my hips from facing his spine to perpendicular. So I pivot it around his body. Now watch as I invert this leg all the way up. And now check it out. Another frame application as I let go. I'm going to hug. And look at this. Frame. So I'm locking out this arm right here. Right? To keep Bernardo's chin down. To limit the ability for him to block my leg from coming over his head. So there's another frame application. A pivot. Another frame. And look. Overload. I'm bringing my hips and my legs in. Bring your arm. Bend your arm, Bernardo. Bend your arm, look at this. There's all the resources here to control. And look at this, legs, hips, arms, everything overloading a single limb of Bernardo's for the effectiveness of the submission. So how interesting, right, bro? Because you can sit up. How interesting that if you're student A, 20 steps. Yep, yep. How many techniques before you go, go I don't want to do BJJ, I'm out. Thanks, guys, it was fun while it lasted. I'll see you guys later. I'm done with BJJ. <laughs> No, and many times that's how you should start. Because, for example, they say like, do this, 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 do this. So, it's crazy. No. no, right? So the sooner a student no. can see jujitsu for the simple core, yeah. right, principles that it is, the more they can say, wait a minute, I don't have to remember 20 steps. 
if I just can remember three principles oh. applied twice. Oh, Henry, and look how this really works because uh, you mentioned something that stuck in my mind. Like, so control, timing, and leverage. That's all we want. That's yeah. all. And that's the this thing is this. When people talk about the principles of jujitsu, very grandly, very esoterically, we always say alavanka, leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We always say timing. Yeah. yeah. Be precise. Yeah. Um, control. It's all about good pressure. Pressure yeah, is good. Yeah. But when you say leverage, leverage is too ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, what does that even mean? Yeah, is, what does timing yeah, yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, if you say velocity principle, clock principle, yeah. tag along principle, river principle, now what I'm telling you is that leverage is actualized, it's made possible yeah. by micro principles. That's why we call them micro principles yeah. because macro is leverage and timing. Control, timing, and leverage. Those are the macros of jujitsu. Yep. And then when you get into the micros, it's how do you make leverage possible? How do you make good timing possible? Right, how good do you make good control yeah. possible? That's the whole point. The yep. micros are the enablers of the macros when it comes to principles, which is which is why they're so much more actionable. A student can understand a pivot principle much more than alavanka or leverage yeah, as a general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you mean leverage? Where is the leverage here? The leverage is when you change the angle on the wrist yep. and you frame your forearm into your pelvis, that's the leverage. So you have to tell me how to do that. So it's more granular than the macro principles, but it's more general than the steps of the technique. You see, there's levels of... Yeah, it's, it's not like too broad, but it's also not too narrow. Yes, it's, it's and, and that's what yeah. jiu-jitsu is missing right now, is yeah. that happy middle ground where it's yeah. simple. 32, you can remember all 32. Yeah. You can remember yeah. all those, and you can call on them whenever you want. So here's the thing. When you talk about the two students, student A and student B, who's going to get frustrated more quickly? Student A, yeah, right? And now, who's going who's gonna to have more, come into class and be more relaxed? Student B is going to go, oh, it's no big deal. I see it. I understand the blocks here of what makes yep. this work. So then you talk about how this mindset translates into the application of techniques while sparring, right? How it streamlines your use of techniques while sparring. Because let's be honest, how often when you learn a technique, do you do it exactly the same while sparring? Very rare. Yeah, Am I right? We're drilling. You always have to adapt to it. Bro, it's always a little yeah, different because yeah. one technique on five people yeah. is five different techniques. Yeah, I agree. So if I you don't have the ability to understand your, your techniques at a principal level, yeah. then you can't adapt them when you need to for yeah. the actuality of the situation. So back to the ground position. Let's say the same situation. This student who just learned that arm bar from the mount yeah. ends up sparring and ends up in a neon belly position. Student A would be like, wait a minute, but how do I do my technique? Because... I'm not mounted. Yep. I don't have the same. If I do this, I'm going to get thrown over this way. Right? There's no way I'm going to fall. So they can't do the same technique. So student A lands here. And while they're trying to figure out how to apply the move they just learned, yep. and eventually this guy makes his escape. He gets out. He shrimps out. He puts him in the gun. And before you know it, your move never made possible because yep. you were stuck on the steps. Yep. You were looking for perfect steps that never arrived. Student B just learned that technique, pivot frame overload, lands on neon belly, and right away recognizes that, okay, this is different, not the same. So instead of trying the same technique, they control the wrist here, pivot, frame, look, and the guy defends, overload. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing from the mount, yes. but the same principles that you're using. Modify. Yeah, now it. look, pivot, frame, overload. Oh. Man, that's amazing. So one more time here. Incredible. So what's interesting is when we, when we were in the mount yeah. and we did the pivot, we were pivoting our, our wrist, our hand, around the axis of his wrist by tucking the elbow in. When I was knee on belly and you have the same defensive position, yep. look, I can't do that over here, so I pivot my whole body. Yep. And now the frame is not elbow to hip, the frame is locked out arm. Yep. So once you pivot, you can lock out and drive. Look at the lockout. Now my whole body's driving here. You go to defend maybe, look, freeze. Look at the overload, overload. Yep. And now I hand off, get my Kimura grips here. Now, once again, pivot, and now frame the humerus bone right here for stability, and then bring my knee to your back, this knee here, and then overload by introducing my legs. So, oh man, that's incredible. so this is the same principles applied in a different position. Yep. Same principle, pivot frame overload, and how can we apply that from neon belly? Someone who understands principles can do that. Someone who's stuck on the steps, the moment the position changes, the technique is garbage, it's dead. 
So to give more life to your techniques, you want to understand them at the principal level. Otherwise, they die when the situation changes. Yep. And that's how principle-based learning changes the implementation of techniques that you learn when you're sparring, when things are never perfect. L lastly, but possibly most importantly, when you're sparring, you end up in a situation, and again, we talked about this. You land in a position where there's no technique. You do it all. I land there all the time. Every single time I spar, almost, I land in a position that I've never been before, which I love. Yep. And I, I'm very proud that my one of my most unique abilities, and every black belt really, is when you get there, you're able to improvise. I agree. You know, I agree. you're able to make something up on the fly. And I love that because you're making something up, it comes out, and sometimes I'm shocked. I'm like, wow, that was amazing. Yep. Right? And you're like, well, how do we do that? How do we make up magic? And sometimes a student will ask you, Bernardo, because they'll say, Bernardo, coach, I have a question. You go over there. What do I do here? And you don't even know the answer because you've never been there before. On right. the spot, you make yep. something up. Yep. And the student goes, oh my gosh, that was amazing. And in your mind, you're thinking, I've never done that before. I just made <laughs> that up. But don't tell him because I'm the man, you know? Right? Am I right? We all kind of hide it. So sometimes we shock ourselves as teachers when we improvise like that. The question is, where is that coming from? Right? And that comes from, you tell me. You're our own principles, right? It's your own. And here's the thing. I believe... And I think why this, why you're, we're excited to work together is because you believe in principles and you may have labeled them differently. Yep. But ultimately, nothing that you would learn, Bernardo would learn from the 32 principles watching and observing, would be, wow, I've never imagined that was a real principle. What it's going to do for someone like you who already embodies all of it, you watch it and you go, man, this is amazing because I already knew all of this, but I didn't have labels on these. And because yeah. there's no labels, it's like speaking English with no alphabet. There's no structure to it. I feel almost like you build a methodology for the principles that every black belt has, but sometimes they don't know how to transmit that. They don't so know how to like transmit. And no. because they don't know how to transmit, the white and blue belts take way longer yeah, to get right. to that point. Yeah. And what I'm saying is imagine if we could give beginners, white, blue, purple, and everybody really, the ability to have this relationship with principles yeah, that we yeah, have now, yeah. 25 years later, yeah, would it be would it be a much easier and quicker path? It would be much. Time. It would be much less unpleasant. There, yeah. people would quit much less often yeah. because the frustration would be less. Yeah, and it meant frustrations. What people quit jujitsu the most? Number one, we, 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 and yeah. we know it. And it's yeah. like it's the, the dropout and, rate. And goes back to the 20 steps that they have to memorize instead of memorizing three yeah, or four. And, and the frustration of when you're sparring, you just learn a technique. Now you spar today. Yeah. And when you're a blue beginner with you know four months of jujitsu and you just learn that technique and you're trying to apply those steps, they never work because you're thinking about jujitsu in regards to specific steps and specifics are not universally applicable in a dynamic changing situation. So that's why people quit. Frustration from absorbing 20 steps and then frustration from those 20 steps don't even work yep. when they apply them because they're stuck to the steps. Yep. So regarding improvisation, the most important thing to understand in order for improvisation to be maximum is the full potential of each principle. And what that means is a principle can be used. For example, the pivot principle can be used to create leverage to push the arm to the ground, which yep. is what we did right now. Yep. But the pivot principle can be used for much more than just to create leverage to push someone's arm to the ground. Yep. So once you understand all the purposes for why the pivot principle can be used in a sparring or in a fight, once you understand the full range of purposes, then the full, the full menu of principle of pivot principle opportunities is available to you because you understand the full principle, not just one application of the principle. It's like the letter. A can sound like A or A. Ah. Yeah, it's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you got to yeah. understand, my son, like, Henner, that says A. I'm like, no, but that's an A that sounds like ah. So yeah. you have to understand that the same letter can be used for different purposes. Once you do, language starts to come out much more naturally, much more effectively. Yeah. And that's what we want to do. So what I want to do now is I want to do a quiz for our friends. And in this quiz, we're going to demonstrate five techniques. And you guys are going to have to identify what the purpose of the pivot principle is in each of these techniques, oh, all incredible. pivot principle, that's incredible. but different purposes in each position and technique. Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So let's say Bernardo's mounted on me for position number one. Get low, put your hooks in, and put your land hooks in, hip pressure, and hands really wide. Let's say I want to trap and roll you right now. The problem is it's hard because you have a good base. So check this out, you guys. I'm going to demonstrate the technique, and then I want you guys to identify why the pivot principle, if, you, if, if I pivot, number one, recognize it, and number two, when I pivot, why and what did the pivot accomplish? Check it out.
One. Pull your arm out. Pull this arm. Gotcha. And then here we go. And we trap and roll. Let's go back. So you guys, talk to me. Why did I pivot? It wasn't to push Bernardo's arm to the ground. Yep. Like the first couple demonstrations. But there was a pivot here. I check Bernardo's bicep and his tricep. I walk my feet. I lift my pelvis off the ground. I walk my feet in a circular 90 degree angle here. Now I pivoted. And right, now right. by doing that, I'm breaking your alignment with me. Yeah. So you're off balance to one side. Then I bring this hand. And then presumably what you would like to do is pull this arm out pull. and get back to normal, yeah. right? Yeah. So when I do this and I go here, pull it out. When you do, I change my grip. And now yeah. we have this, kill the hook, bridge, and yeah, roll. So what was the purpose of the pivot, would you say? You created some such a great angle that I became light on your leg. And then when you try to recover, I can trap that arm, and then ultimately you get all like I don't have a base anymore. I'm all like. So in this case, we'll call it the pivot, the purpose. You guys should be we're quizzing you guys, but he's chiming in here. I love it. The purpose of the pivot was to break their balance, cause them to readjust their arm, and in doing so, give us the trap and roll opportunity after we remove the back hook. Simple, effective. Let's go to the guard armbar for example. Right. Basic. So he's in my guard, and let's see. I'm just setting up a basic. Arm bar from the guard here. A lot of times they'll stack you up. Okay, so from here, check this out. We come through and we get right here. Got you right here. Belly down, arm bar transfer. Was there a pivot? Man, huge. Because I was trying to put so much weight on you and you found another angle to. So, what would we say the purpose of that pivot was? Maybe to save my neck, to avoid the stack, to yep. transfer to belly down and keep pressure on his arm. So to preserve the arm bar, I pivoted underneath him, which is very different than pinning the wrist to the ground and is very different than breaking your balance by moving yep. on the trap and roll to the side. Yep. Let's go to another one. Let's say, standing up. So let's say we're here, you back up, and let's say we have an attacker street fight, goes for a big front kick. Go, 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 go. Boom. And rah. So there's just a standard front kick, which can be neutralized by, what is it, you guys? What is it, Bernardo? What am I doing? Pivot. Thank you. <laughs> you guys, another pivot. What's the purpose of this pivot? Would you say the foot goes here, the foot lands, right? So it's just a simple deflection of their energy as it comes in. So I'm pivoting to redirect his energy, avoid the front kick to my stomach or chest, and then follow up with some attack thereafter, whether I strike him or I clinch him. So the purpose was strike avoidance in that particular case. You're in my guard, kneeling. You guys are following me out here? Are you tracking? Is this too fast? Are we going okay? You were very are they having fun? Yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> so let's say it's open guard right here. I'm kneeling open guard. I get my knees inside. And let's say I insert my foot on the bicep here for the spider guard. Look, I'm on one side of his body. I use the leg as a pendulum and watch the pivot. One, two. What was the purpose of the pivot, you guys? Somebody at home, tell me. Let's let them talk now. You guys, you need to participate as well. The purpose of the pivot was to build momentum after which I could activate the spider hook connection on his bicep to off balance Bernardo and achieve the sweep. Once again, different than the wrist push, different than saving my neck from a stack, different than deflecting a strike, it's building momentum for a sweep, but it's all pivot principle. And then finally, you're down here, I'm mounted on your feet this way. One of my favorite chokes, I call the killer beef in the mount, so I'm low, I like to hug the neck, swim inside if I can, I wanna get inside both arms, but I wanna hug his neck, swim inside, and then I'll grab my lapel over here, Pull my skirt way up, look, and hand off the tip right here, blocking the bicep. Pull the arm through, hand on the ground, pivot, pivot. And just by pulling my shoulder back, I'm pulling the lapel, which is activating the choke. Was there a pivot? Yep. What, was, what did you feel the purpose? What did it accomplish on that one? I think like, you, you, Henry, what I'm learning here is like, you always find angles. Like, this is my favorite choke, <laughs> but you always find a different angle to make the technique much easier. And then, then that's part of the people. There right? you go. So in this case, I think, fair to say, angle, uh, fair to say, tension. It's almost like a tourniquet, you know? Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know this yeah, word? It's a yeah. good word. Tourniquet is when you twist, it gets really tight when you twist the ropes in opposite directions. So I created pressure from this pivot. Yeah. Have a seat, bro. We need to get real with them. So this is where you have to kind of start, kind of step out now and understand from a bigger picture. What are we saying here? In order to understand the full potential of a principle, you have to understand the various whys, all the purposes for which that principle can serve you. You see, you all these moves you already knew. Yep. yep. But maybe you didn't realize that there's the one thing making, because you, maybe you never realized that all had something in common. Yep. The kick defense, right? Spider yep. guard sweep. You, you thought they're great jujitsu techniques, but when you understand that all of those are the yep. same yep. in their use of the pivot, but different in the purpose of the pivot, that's when jujitsu starts to get very simple. 
Because when you look at a technique now and you observe it, you go, oh, there's the pivot, there's the extension, there's the frame, yep. there's the overload. You can see if you understand that that even exists. Yep. But if you don't know those elements exist, you can't observe them in the situation. So the way it works is, if you have a strong relationship with each principle, every single time you watch the technique be taught, presented, or practiced, but say someone teaches a move, your teacher at your dojo, and you go to practice a technique, every time you interact with that technique, that's an opportunity to increase your strength of your relationship with that principle every single time. Do you understand? So the likelihood that you increase your, your confidence and your relationship with that principle goes up. But here's the catch. You can't increase your relationship with the principle if you don't know it exists. I agree. You feel I agree. me? Yeah. It's yeah. not going to be yeah. nearly as efficient or yeah. nearly as effective as it would be if you knew exactly that when you did yeah. all those techniques, pivot, 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 pivot. Yeah. And the best analogy for this, you guys, there's a perfect analogy for how we like to think about principles in jujitsu. So let me bring up my props for this Yeah, one. I love this analogy. Come on, bro. I love it. You guys, look at these. And give me some space here, Cole, so we can kind of see... So Cole will help me label these, but check this out, you guys. Think about it this way. The bank account analogy. Think of every principle as its own bank account, okay? Think about that for a second. You can, you can bank with one bank, and at a bank you can have multiple accounts under your name, under your business. Think of each principle under your name as its own bank account, own separate account. What's rule number one? You can't deposit money into an account that doesn't exist. <laughs> open the account. First rule is open the account. And this is what is accomplished in the 32 principles of jujitsu, the course, the whole yep. course that we're now very excited to make available to the world through BJJ Fanatics. Open the account. What does that even mean? When you We did a very brief demonstration right now, but when you actually watch the lessons, principle one, principle two, principle three, in the 32 principles of jujitsu, what we do is we start by explaining the principle, giving great background on what the principle is, but then we go into all the different purposes for that principle. And we show the principle in a street self-defense technique, yep. in a sport jujitsu technique. We show the principle from the mount, from the guard, standing, takedown, MMA, gi everything, no gi, yeah. gi, no gi. There's no limitations. We just, we splash five or six different variations of the principle being demonstrated in completely different situations so that you start to see, oh my gosh, it's all different, but it's all the same. So principle number one, connection. You're gonna understand what that means. Right? You, number two, detachment. Number three, blah, blah, blah. It just keeps going. So each lesson, you first start by understanding the principle. Then you understand the purposes of the principle. But then we go into research recommendations. Because once you understand a principle, the next step is for you to go back through all of your jujitsu yep. and do research and identify in your own existing arsenal where well, are the principles. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we teach you how to do that to everything you've ever learned. How do you filter it? So that you now understand the principles in that engagement and with those techniques much better than you ever have. And then after the research period of the session, we also give focus sparring. So when we teach you the pivot principle, principle 22, we then explain to you how to spar pivot sparring. Right, that's amazing. So we give you the sparring guidelines because here's the thing you guys, in jiu-jitsu, if you've been in for any number of years or any amount of time, you know that you only get better at what you actually focus on. And if you just come to class, drill five or six moves, and just roll, eh, your progress is going to show that. But when yep. you say, no, I want to master gi chokes, I want to master foot locks, I want to master triangles, and you spend a year doing that, everything changes because you, you're focusing on something specific. So we teach you the specific sparring guidelines to master the principles. Not a submission, not a, a escapes, not a sweep system. But the principles are mastered in that sparring, and you do that for several weeks to several months, whatever you want. And then you move on to the next principle. And you learn the principle, you learn, you do a, go through the research process of your own techniques, and then you engage in the sparring sessions dedicated to that principle. That's how the course is organized. Yeah. No, I, I think it's definitely like a much easier way to learn, and it makes the, this like learning path much much easier and quicker. And I think so. Yeah. People ask, is it white belts or black belts? Or who's it for? I'm like... If you're a black belt, what you're going to love is it's going to make sense of all your jujitsu. You're going to go, oh my gosh, 
I no, did all that. I already did. pass that information to the students as well. And I for teaching, hundred percent. If you're a teacher, no doubt. But even if you're a black belt, just a practitioner, it's just so powerful to know what you know so much better. And the energy that you guys are feeling right now, right, is a result of me and Hidon had a breakthrough in our own jujitsu as a result of this study process. We understand jujitsu. Everything we ever learned, we understand it better than we ever have. And that was very exciting because we're older now. 30, I'm 38, you know, Hidon's 40 years old. So we're getting older, but to have a new excitement and a new relationship with jiu-jitsu is very like, wow. We never, we, we always knew there were principles in jiu-jitsu. Everybody knows there's principles, loosely. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, you went here, like, you guys were never, like, the strong, muscular person. So you you need principles. You wanted, yes. like, to roll with someone. Yes, the so we always had them, like you do, oh. in your jiu-jitsu. Oh. But we didn't even know what they were. We didn't yeah. have the labels right. for them. So... Just to be clear, bank accounts, let's open them up. Today, we opened bank accounts so you understand what you're gonna do throughout the entirety of this course. Today, we opened accounts for pivot principle, frame principle, overload principle, okay? We did that. The goal is to open the rest. And when you open accounts, the goal is to then make deposits. And when do these deposits happen? The deposits happen and we open them by you understanding that they exist. So when we taught you what the pivot principle was, frame, overload, when I first explained what those principles were, automatically you open the account. It exists now in your life. Now deposits come when you have a conscious interaction with that principle in observation or in practice. So if you watch a YouTube video and you notice on a cool technique taught by one of your favorite black belts, you notice a pivot. And you're really conscious, like, wait, oh, here, beautiful pivot to make that move happen. Yeah. That was a conscious interaction. So guess what that counts as? Deposit. Yeah. Done. So today, when we first did the pivot principle from the mount armbar, there was a deposit there, right? Maybe two deposits because we did the pivot on the armbar. We did the pivot the first um, around the wrist. And we also did the pivot when we looped the hips around the corner. So there was two deposits there. Then we did frame and overload. We got some more deposits, right? We got two frames, two overloads in the first technique. Look, frames, right, overload. Amazing. So, we're, so every time you're making deposits. But then what happened? We went into our quiz. Remember the quiz? Yep. Where we yep. talked about five additional yep. techniques that all had pivots. Look what happened. Pivot. Pivot. Right, that's incredible. <laughs> that's amazing. Do you understand? So this one already today has a much higher bank balance than the other ones that we touched on, but they're limited. And you guys, there is no limit to the deposit amount in each one of these accounts. For the whole life of jujitsu, you can keep making deposits. But what's the rule again? You can't make deposits in the accounts that the don't actually exist. happen. And yeah. when they exist, Bernardo, once you open the accounts, it's automatic, the deposits. So yeah. when you, let's say we were to drill a spider guard sweep, and I know about the pivot principle, and we're doing this kind of whipping spider guard sweep, and we're swinging from one side to the other, every con, when I'm saying to myself, pivot is happening right here, beautiful pivot, boom, 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 boom. Every one of those, deposit, deposit, deposit. It's automatic. It just happens. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to get a jar. You don't got to get $100. I was going to do it with $1 bills, but it wouldn't be as impressive. So I just did it with hundreds. <laughs> so you guys value the importance of principles more in your life. I'm like, no, I just, we get some hundreds. But I got to return the money when we're no, done. Yeah, it's not my money. Right. I got to give it back to the owner. In, in the beginning of the video, it was not stuck in my mind. And now it is like... Pivot, frame, overload. Pivot, frame, overload. Pivot, frame, overload. Yes. And in every position you are, where is the pivot? Where is the frame? Where is the or, or, where is the river? Where is the tag along? And where is the momentum you can, principle? You can name anyway That's the whole point. It's A, B, C. It's yeah. alphabet. Yeah. A, B, and C can use cab. C, A, B. Yeah. B, A, C can be yeah. back, but you need a K to add on to it. So they can be used together, but they don't have, they can be used with any other number of principles also. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the whole point. That's but you need yeah. all 32 yeah. to make all the possible combinations that exist in yeah. Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah. the whole point. So you're making these deposits. Now, what's the point of these deposits? That's the question, bro. What's the point of all the deposits? It all leads to one thing. When you land in a position, Bernardo, where you don't have a technique, you've never learned what to do, you're stuck, that's when you make withdrawals from the bank account. <laughs> so when you're trapped in a bad position and you want to make withdrawals, guess what? You, what, what happens in my jiu-jitsu, and I think yours is the same, what, well, mine is very specific. When I land in a bad position, it's called a 32 principles diagnostic. And a diagnostic is like when a mechanic or a doctor, they do a diagnostic to see what's wrong with you. Yep. What's, what, what's, the, what's the analysis of the situation they analyze? So a diagnostic on a, on a position is I always get in that position and I start to feel 
Where's his balance? Where's his strength? Where's his weight? Where's the opening? And once I do my diagnostic, I quickly identify, okay, based on everything I felt, here are the three or four principles that I can apply right now to begin to make my escape. And sometimes I'll try one and then it doesn't work as well as I thought. But then I go two, three, and four, and it works perfectly, and I make up a brand new move. And I escape it, and that improvisation capability is because I've made the deposits. So when I'm in that position and I want to pull, I guess what? I go here, I need a little pivot, I need a little frame, and I need a little overload. And if you need, you can, you can get a more. Pull, 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 pull. But here's the point. You can only pull... You can only pull it if it's in there. I got it. I got it. And that's the point. And here's what's really cool. When you're in a really, really bad position, sometimes you need more than $100 out of pivot. You need, you need, you know what I'm saying? You need this. I got but it. here's the point. A white belt most often hasn't made this much deposit in their pivot account. Yep to be able to pull this. So you or I can come up with a beautiful solution, yep. but the white belt solution to the same position might only be this good. I got it. it might not be this good. So the point is, more deposits equals more money in your bank. And more money buys better quality improvisations. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And if you don't have the deposits, the attacker, you probably have You're done. Because if you don't have deposits, you know what you do? Yeah. You, you, you just go crazy. Okay. And you burn energy, and you burn uh, psychological energy, you burn physical energy, yep. you exhaust, and then you get choked out very quickly, bro. Yep. The fight's over. Yep. You're done. Yep. Right? Like, it's, it, it, that we've all been there, and the, especially in our earlier years. But it happens less now as a black belt where you land in positions where you panic. Yep. Because what happens when you, let's say you have a big expense in your life, in normal life. You have a big injury or a big medical expense, and you go to the bank, and there's no money. Yeah, you're in trouble. <gasps> you panic because yeah. you haven't saved your money to then pay for that expense. Yeah. It's yeah. the same in jujitsu. You panic when you haven't made the deposits and you're in a bad position and you don't know where to pull from. You waste energy, you waste psychological, and you go crazy. And as a result of your crazy, you get choked. Yeah. So that's the whole point. You want to build your cushion of comfort in bad positions by making investments into the principal bank accounts that can only be opened once you learn what they are. Yeah. And what's crazy is that that's why this has been so successful for so many people is because the black belts go, man, finally, I can categorize my jujitsu. And the white belts are thinking, oh my gosh, there's now a simple way to process all of the techniques I'm learning. There's an easy way to categorize them that I can call on later and they're having great success as a result of it. All belts. Yeah. No, and even if you don't have to call right now, man, you're making your deposit. Yes, your deposit. bro. Welcome to Finance no, no, no. 101, you guys. We're here. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> so here's the deal, you guys. If you're a student watching this right now, because yep. this is what people said to us after we initially launched it, there are many students that said, Henry, why am I not learning like this at my school? Yep. This is crazy. Why am I learning English without, they never taught me the alphabet yep. in my jujitsu academy. It's a serious problem. Yep. Because when someone sees us explain this like this, it makes so much sense. It's the only way it should be done, but yet most schools, including ours, didn't have this approach before very recently. Yep. So there were uh, people are frustrated that it wasn't like this. And let me explain. There's a very good reason why BJJ is not taught like this today. It's twofold. Students and teachers. Students, when they first come in, they become very addicted to the extrinsic solutions. So you're my master. I'm the student. Yep. And I say, Bernardo, how do I escape the mount? And you say, Hannah, trap the wrist, trap the elbow, trap the foot, oopa, and roll them over. I give you 10 steps. It's boom, 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 boom. And it's, it tastes good. It tastes good yep. a little bit in the beginning because you're learning solutions to problems and it feels good. And you, as the teacher, you love that you have the answer. Yeah. So you're like, I got 20 steps for Henner, and he loves me because I'm the master, and I got all the steps. Oh. So because you're proud to have me be the sole instructor and knowledge base, and because I'm happy to learn problems, uh, solutions to my problems, we get addicted to the wrong things. Yeah, I feel almost like you're not teaching them how to fish. You're yes, just giving them that's exactly yeah. right. And the oh. student in the beginning, all they want is fish because they're hungry. So they don't uh, care. Uh, no, 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 but good. the problem is if we get addicted to just eating the fish that we didn't catch ourselves, we oh. never learn to catch those fish. Yep. So what happens is the solution to this is the teachers, when they teach, they need to explain that, guys, here are the steps. But guess what? The principles that make this move work are boom, boom, and boom. I got it. They, they owe the student that. And the student, when they're learning a technique, what they have to realize is the steps are there to help give structure to it, but they're not the most important thing. It's almost like you want to see through the steps and identify the principles on the other side. So allow the steps to exist in your, in your conscientious point of view here, but don't be so blinded by the steps that you don't see that through the steps, there's the principles behind them that okay. really are what you want to learn. Okay. So that's the important part. And both of those... The teacher explaining principles more and the student 
uh, uh, accepting that the steps are not the most important thing in jiu-jitsu. Both of those evolutions in jiu-jitsu are enabled by the learning of the 32 principles, right? Because yeah, if, if there's no agreed upon 32 yeah. principles of jiu-jitsu, then neither one of us can evolve because I think it's all about steps and you think it's all about steps and you're teaching 20 steps to students and you love being the master. Really what you want to love is being the teacher of teaching me how to fish. You right. want to teach students how to think independently. Right. And students, we want to learn how to think independently in jiu-jitsu. We have to chase that because until you do, Man, it's frustrating, it's tiring, things don't work out the way you plan, all the things we talked about. Jiu-Jitsu is way more fun yep. when you see it through the lens of the 32 principles because everything makes sense more easily, techniques work more naturally, and improvising in situations where you don't know what to do is so much easier when you have the bank account to call oh. on, to pull from. Hey, I'm a huge fan of learning anything in life. And every time I try to learn something, I always focus like, let me learn the big picture first, and then I go into details. But... Anytime you try to learn complex stuff without having the big picture, it's always like a huge challenge. And that's where the frustration comes, at least for me. You know, when I'm trying to learn a computer stuff, whatever, if I don't understand like the foundation, there it is. I start getting frustrated and then, man, that's amazing. And, and I, I think it's true for, I think it's true for a lot of people. I think it's, it's just, jujitsu is so new still, yep. right? We're like a hundred years in, it's not that old. Yep. So I'm just excited that we, kind of finally have the time and the mental space and freedom me and he don't just sit down and really hash this out in a way that we're very proud of and when we created this I was like man this is so massive I want to get feedback from the top black belts I can possibly access to give me feedback on this because I think it's amazing but yep. my opinion only matters this much I need to know from the rest so I sent it out to the guys right Cobrinha, Shunji, uh, Tom DeBlas, Hanzo, Lioto, Fabrizio Verdum, Nathan Orchard, Guy Mendez I'm sending to these top black belts and I say guys Look at this. Let me know what you think. And hey, if you like it, great. If you don't, tell me. I just want feedback. Yeah. And man, they loved it, bro. They yeah. gave so much no, respect, dude. It was really cool. Yeah, I'm inside this world of the talk with the top competitors. That every time we mention you guys' names, the first thing that comes is like foundation and escapes. They always talk about that, man. They have crazy good escapes. And they know the foundations of Jiu-Jitsu as like nobody else. So. That was, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And you know, for these guys, it was cool because even though I sent them all the course and I said, hey, review it and let me know what you think. When they sent back their reviews, they all said unique things about why this was special and important. But universally, what they all agreed on was number one, that Jiu-Jitsu is principles. Yep. Now, none of them have labeled it like this. Yep. They, they acknowledge that. Like, yo, we haven't put a names to every one of them and laid it out and made a curriculum. Yeah. But we, like you, you know it's, there's certain principles that govern everything. Yep. They all agreed on that. Yep. And the second thing is they all agreed that it had never been done before, where it was organized in a structured curriculum so that anyone can learn regardless of the rank. So with those two kind of universal feedback from all these amazing um, black belts and you know, world champions and UFC champions and competitors and MMA and gi, no gi, to have that much feedback from that broad of an audience of, of world leaders in jiu-jitsu was very meaningful for me. And that's when I got that feedback, I was like, okay, I feel comfortable now that I can share this with the world and it's going to impact a lot of lives in jiu-jitsu. And, and here we are. Yeah, man, that's amazing, Hannah. Yeah, Hannah, man, I think like first thing I would say, this was a huge honor for me. Because, <laughs> no, literally, like I think this was like the most important lesson I have ever had in jiu-jitsu. Because, man, we were that's talking about deal, the foundation. That's a had a lot of lessons. Yeah. No, and uh, yeah, I'm doing this for like 20 years, 21 years now. Like it started in 2001, 2022. And guys, man, we're going to have this course at bjjfanatics.com for four days only. We, we were talking with this guy here for how long, Henry? Like, oh, man, it's at least five years. Yeah. You know, Mike, for, Mike came here for the first time, then I met you yeah. after, and it's like it's been back and yeah. forth ever since. So that's it, you guys. Yeah. We, we decided we're going to do a 32 Principles event this month, four days only, 25% off. And um, it's going to be awesome. And it also comes with the 32 Principles downloadable handbook because I feel like, especially in America, I mean, I live here, I grew up here, I'm American, my mom's American, I, my dad's from Brazil, as everybody knows, but... Americans very much like structured learning. They like, like yeah, they, this is yeah. what it has to be. Tell yeah. me what to do and I'll do it. And to give them a structured curriculum to learn the principles that ultimately will allow them to take control of their jiu-jitsu, videos are amazing. And it's 32 principles. It's like, I don't know how many hours in those 32 principles of instruction, but we also created the 32 principles downloadable handbook that you can have with the lessons. What's really cool is you can print this out and you can basically, and then just kind of, you're funneling through it. Every page has a different principle visuals, graphics, and a detailed explanation. You can obviously take notes and print this out for yourself. So this comes with the actual course. Um, 
And that's it, you guys. We're doing this. We're excited to do it. Fanatics, no better partner. I mean, they, they do a great job. They have an amazing audience. And, you know, being that my goal with this course very, very, very specifically was to make it accessible to every person in jiu-jitsu, um, I think you guys are the perfect partner to make that happen. And listen, if you get on it during the four-day super sale with BJJ Fanatics, congratulations. You're going to love it. We can't wait to hear your feedback. If you don't, if you miss it, the course still exists at GracieUniversity.com all day, every day, year round, which is where all of our courses are. But um, we're very excited to make this special opportunity possible for the BJJ Fanatics True Blood fans, you know. Yeah. Hey, remember, we always try to partner up with the very best guys, so we couldn't be more excited to have the this this foundation of Jiu-Jitsu at BJJ Fanatics. Thank you, guys. Bro. Make sure to check that out. Like, uh, it was really really hard to get him. We finally made it, so <laughs> let's do this. You guys, most people in jiu-jitsu never learned how to learn jiu-jitsu. And ultimately, that's what we set out to create with the 32 principles. So if upon reviewing this course, learning the material, you feel like you have a better grasp on how to learn the art. It doesn't matter what your source is, videos, in person, where your academy is, what affiliation or what rank. If you process jujitsu better and you apply techniques more naturally on the other side of learning these 32 principles, then it was worth it for us. And uh, Hito's not here today. He sends my best to you and the team. He's obviously yeah. very grateful for this opportunity as well. And he's my, my partner in the 32 mission to, 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 to revolutionize jiu-jitsu by making it much easier for everyone to understand how to understand this incredible art that we all love so much. So, um, yeah, I'm very proud of this work and I only wish that my grandfather could see this, you know? Uh, he's not here, he passed away several years ago and we miss him every day on the mat. But this is one where I'm like, man, he taught me everything. And he even taught us Alavanka, timing, control, these principles were discussed, but they were never crystallized like this. And uh, all because of his teachings and my father and my uncles um, and everything we've learned from all of our instructors our whole lives, is this possible? Um, but this is one that I wish I could have shared with him. So because I can't, we're here sharing it with you guys. So enjoy. Can't wait to hear your feedback. And thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Man, thank you. Yes. It was amazing. Guys, make sure to check that out. BGJFanatics.com is coming up very soon. And I hope you guys all enjoy it.